So that's how I was able to learn the stock market and trial and error. Because sometimes I would blow that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got to learn how to, you know what I'm saying? You got to make mistakes in order to learn. Mm -hmm. So that's how I, I pretty much got into it. So I'm going you think you fucked up before you got it right? I would say learning, I would say about 50000 yeah. of my own money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so how much do you think you profited? <laughs> oh, you ain't seen his Instagram, oh, yeah, man. Having a, a man mean, having yeah, them M's yeah. now. Jake, <laughs> You're listening to Big Facts with Big Bank and DJ Scream. Live from First Class Sounds, you know who it is, DJ Scream. Big Bank is here, baby Jade is here. We got a special guest with us today on Big Facts. He goes by the name of Aristotle, represent Aristotle Investments. What's up, my bro? What's going on? What's going Everything on? Everything good with you? Everything good. Now it's been it's been important it's been important for us on Big Facts to teach as much as possible about um you know what I'm saying financial literacy and you know people taking niggas taking their money and doing the right things with it to try to create more money and wealth and all that type of shit. So hopefully you'll be able to give everybody some game today on how to do. I got plenty. You got plenty. How did, how did it start for you? What was the moment when you was like you know I need to take the money that I do have and make some positive decisions to turn it into more money? Well, it all started because I was in the military. I joined when I was 18, mm -hmm. so. I would say um, I was a barber in the military because mm -hmm. it was easy for so because soldiers had to get their hair cut. So that was the first thing I learned was barbering. I learned that AIT. So you was cutting hair? Yeah, I was okay. cutting hair. Got so you. I still cut my own hair to this day, right? Yep. So basically I was a barber and I wanted to figure out. You cut your hair yourself? Yeah. How, you, how the hell you do that? With a mirror. Just, well, with the self-cut system. So it's like a three-way mirror. Yeah. And uh, shout out to uh, Chuka the barber. He sells a self cut system. It has lights on it, and then you pretty much get in the middle of the three way mirror. You pretty much get in the middle of the three way mirror, and then you just can see all angles. With the big mirror behind you. That's hard. Nah, it's just a three way mirror. So it's one you mirror see the like back this. Too? Yeah. So it's like it's one mirror like this, and then mirrors coming like that way. You okay. know what I'm saying? So it's one right here, and then cut. So come. So, anyways. I was cutting hair and I saved money and I wanted to figure out what to do with the money. And then that's where pretty much I just Googled how to make money from my cell phone. That's literally how I learned that, it. That's how you started? You just, literally, you just uh, hit back Google? Back in uh, 2016, I just Googled how to make money from my cell phone. The only thing that popped up every single time was investing. So mm -hmm. I learned that how I research is I Google something and I read every last link. Mm -hmm. And then... Pretty much when they whatever they all say the same of, that's what I'm getting into. Mm. So I saw that every link said investing. So that's pretty much what intrigued my knowledge to it. So basically how I came up with a system was, and I tell people to use this system when it comes to saving. So I live extremely below my means. So the army paid me about four thousand and I was making three thousand a month cutting hair. Mm -hmm. So what I would do was I would live off my four thousand, but use the three thousand risk free, just throw it in the stock market. Mm -hmm. So that's how I was able to learn the stock market and trial and error. Cause sometimes I would blow that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You gotta learn how to you know what I'm saying, you gotta make mistakes in order to learn. Mm -hmm. So that's how I pretty much got into it. So I'm gonna you think you fucked up before you got it right? I would say Learning, I would say about fifty thousand yeah. of my own money. Mm. Yeah. So, so, how much do you think you profited? <laughs> oh, you ain't seen his Instagram, oh, yeah. man. Having a, a, man mean, having yeah, them yeah. M's now. Jake, <laughs> Jake. Aristotle having them them M's. Pocket, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. Like it's easy to make money now. Like uh, as far as option trading and all that, mm -hmm. uh, option trading, I average about. Now five. break it down. What is option trading? Because a lot of our Viewers, they ain't gonna know nothing. They have no you idea. You break it all so the way down. That's pretty much what, what I, don't know I specialize that. in <laughs> at first. So basically, I was tra I was trading shares before. So I was building portfolio mm -hmm. long term. I still do mm -hmm. do long term. Mm -hmm. I do both. But trading is what I like to teach people because it's quick and fast money. So this this pretty much the difference between option trading and then trading shares. So if we were let's just say we buy Apple, and Apple was one hundred and thirty dollars. If we buy a share of Apple. We spend 130, mm -hmm. but if we buy a contract of of Apple, we're trying to pretty much it's a contractual agreement within a certain time frame. So you could, so you could either do one week to years out if you wanted to, right? Okay. So basically, and how much would the contract cost in comparison to the Apple share? So let me explain the contract. So let's just say a contract is worth 1.1. .1. That's the limit order, right? All right. One every contracts are 100 times whatever the limit order is. So if it's 0.5, it's $50. If it's 0.11, mm -hmm. so if it's 1.1, .1, it's $110. Right. If it's 1.12, 
then it's one hundred and twelve dollars. So all you got to do is just multiply it by one hundred. So how you make money in options is I will buy a contract for let's just say one one dollar, mm -hmm. right? Which is a hundred dollars. And if 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 that turns into two, I made a hundred dollars per contract. Per, yeah. So instead Break of share, one. so that's why we that's why we try options the most because you get deeper with like calls and puts and all that type. Calls of Calls are right bidding now. on the stock to go up. Puts okay, are bidding screen. on the stock to yeah, go I down. Love me. I'm, a, okay, I'm an okay. OTC trader. I make a little okay, money okay. a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. So what's your background though? Like your real background, like family? Where you like come before from? the army, before the right, haircut, before the shit, army, all before of the haircut. So um, my family is from Cleveland Avenue on my dad on my dad's side, on my mom's side. Most of them are from Florence, South Carolina. So I lived in uh South Side Atlanta most of my life. I went to Creekside High School. Um, I would say from. I would say from like zero to about eight has been Cleveland Avenue. And then, uh, so yeah, I used to play football <laughs> over there. Uh, you know, Southeast, uh, Rosa fan, yeah, Cleveland Avenue, yeah. all and I used to play football when I was a kid, Forest Park, mm -hmm. Forest Park Vikings. So I was big yeah. on Little League football when I was little. So how you how you um managed to not go the wrong route, like coming up in the hood? Right. So basically that's a great question. I would say guidance from my mom and father, you know what I'm saying? Even though we lived in in that area, he would always tell me what not to do. You know what I'm saying? My dad sold drugs growing up. So, and my mom is like, you know, she middle class businesswoman. So I had the best of both yeah, worlds. You yeah, feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, I really had a boys in the hood story. Right. Like, my dad lived in the hood, and then uh, my mom lived in the burbs. Oh, okay. So my mom actually made me live with my dad because, you know, she felt like I was, because I got a spell in elementary school. What the hell you did? Um, how the hell you get a spell in elementary school? What you do? Yeah, yeah, that's deep. I told a girl to... To do something inappropriate to yeah, yourself? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But okay. I don't remember saying that, but that's what they said I said. You feel me? So they was about to spell me and for probably, that. Probably they might have lied on you, and you just were Honestly, too young to dispute it. That's what I'm saying. So my mom hurried up. Jay, the lawyer today. <laughs> if you need legal representation, holla at Jay. So that was uh, <laughs> at Liberty Point Elementary School and um... I would say that's Fulton County. That's Fulton County. So my mom moved me with my dad, and we stayed in the hood, and we stayed off Conley Road. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Southern Trace Apartments, Conley Road. Don't look at getting loose over there. I ain't put you out of school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, they, they moved me how, over So there. How, you, how, you, how you managed to stay focused, though? After Even when you started, like, what kept it's your focus? Because... You gotta. I, I I looked at it the opposite of what people looked at. I saw people. I saw crackheads. I saw gang. You know, a lot of my cousins losing their lives to gang violence stuff like that. And I was trying to figure out what not to do to not go down that path. So I was thinking complete opposite. I was saying, okay, I'm not gonna do this. Not not gonna do this. Not gonna do that. And that's pretty much what kept me positive. Just you know what I'm saying. Pretty much trying to do the opposite of what my environment did. So mm. basically, you didn't get fascinated by the bullshit you got. Nah, I thought it was stupid earlier. Yeah, yeah, earlier. Mm. It was a deterrent for you, pretty much. Well, I used to visit my dad in jail when I was little. So, mm. you know what I'm saying? My dad, so I remember those visions of seeing right. my father. And you don't want to do that. Like, on holidays, he, he'll he be, I'll be calling him. We'll be across from the, uh, you know. The little visitation. The glass, thing. and he'll be yeah. like, I'm sorry. Like, he'll be apologizing to me, and he'll be like, you know, don't do what I did. Right. So, what, what's some of the obstacles you go through? Because you got your hair, you know what I'm saying? You look like a nigga from the streets and shit. Right. Inside the industry. What's some of the obstacles you go through trying to be, you know what I'm saying, being a young black man? Trading that's that's funny that. you said that because uh, when I first started my profile, I didn't even show the fact that I was black. Yeah. For yeah. the first. So, people, so I literally started off on raw skill, just giving people free game. I was in the military. So, I, I, I don't know why I didn't do that because I, I just felt like at first, you know, people wouldn't trust stops from a young black man. I was 22 when mm -hmm. I first started. So mm -hmm. people didn't know my age, my race, nothing. And they was buying and taking advice from a young black man in the military. And they didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. And I finally showed my face, I would say, I would say mid-2019. And believe it or not, that was the best thing I could have did for my brand. Mm -hmm. Showing that I was a young black man in mm -hmm. the military. It helped yeah. me take off further without showing my face. Are yeah. you still in the military? Nah, I got out March 20th, 2020. Okay. Mm. So I was a millionaire before I left the Army. Oh, shit. 
Hmm. Turn up. Mm-hmm. I, I have. I only been out for like a you year. You want one of them um, reserve niggas driving a little Mustangs and Chargers? Nah, I was acting. <laughs> okay. I was acting. Nah, but I did. No, no, but I did have a Camaro. So that, 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 I still got it too. I still got the first car. You know how yeah. Ludacris still owns his Acker? Yeah. 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 So I still own the first car that I bought when I first made me a little money. So which mm. was a Camaro SS. Don't ever let it go because that's a that's nah, it's a, a constant car. reminder. Yeah. I still drive it to this day. In fact, I was about to drive it here, but um. Um, you got a thing out there now. Yeah, I seen you get that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We getting some more things. <laughs> <laughs> we saw on your on, on your shit on your Instagram. So you you get you have ten streams of income, right? Is that correct? Yes. Can you Starting run can you run down them ten? Because most people, you know, got about one. Right. Yeah, run down one the ten for one and a possible, like yeah. like some space. Name, I could just name a few off the top of my head, right? So uh course option trading. Mm-hmm. Long term trading. Okay. Yeah, so you I mean, so I mean, you don't all put that as one trading, just as one stream. That's different nah, streams because for you. Because I make money in different ways. So I might make money option trading. Mm-hmm. Then long term trading is a mm-hmm. different bag. Mm-hmm. And then dividends. I would say dividends and long term trade you can put together. Mm-hmm. But long term income, some stocks don't pay dividends. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I, I, so I'll are dividends down. like residuals? So I was going to get into that. Okay. Dividends are pretty much. Companies pay you a percentage of their profits. So you have monthly paying dividend stocks, which I like, mm-hmm. like uh, O, uh, you got Main, uh, M-A, uh, I-N, then you got O, which is a real estate, real, a realty company. Mm-hmm. So dividends, this is what I say is for dividends for somebody with a lot of money. So let's just say you got a million dollars cash, right? And mm-hmm. you don't want it to collect dust. Mm-hmm. Put it in the bank, we'll make it collect dust. If you buy shares that pay out dividends, you're pretty much letting your money make money. Like right. I can pretty much show it right now. Like 10%, some dividends, all that. Yeah. How you lose in this shit? Bro. If the stock go down? Yes, if the stock go down. So it's actually safer to buy dividend paying stock because they're less volatile. Mm-hmm. Because, you know what I'm saying, they're going to pay out a dividend to you for owning the stock. So like Coca-Cola is a good dividend paying stock. AT&T, good dividend paying stock. Those pay quarterly though. So then you got monthly in quarter so i so what i do mm-hmm. is the money i make from business and all mm-hmm. of that i make sure that's not sitting still so i don't like my money sitting still at all okay i like all my money to make money in some way so let me ask you this real quick not to cut you off so yeah. is a dividend kind of similar to a cd or a certificate of deposit no here's here's what a dividend is right so for instance coca-cola is going to pay you so coca-cola is forty dollars a share right mm-hmm. And all you have to do is Google dividend history. So let's just say Coca-Cola is paying you, let's say, I would say 20 cents, 20 cents per share. Okay. So every $40 you spend, they're going to give you 20 cents back per share per quarter. So I'm basically so, making $8 off of Coca-Cola. If if you have a lot of shares of it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you what? Oh, what back, so you, I think you got to about four. I, I'm just okay, curious four. to know the other six. Okay, so uh, book writing. I have okay, two books. Okay, you're author, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm Are they book. e-books or like physical e-books. books? Okay. E-books. What you write about? So one book is called Find a Problem, Sell the Solution. And that's pretty much what every, that's how I figure out all my streams of income. So what I do is I'll look at a problem and then I'll, and then what I'll try to do is sell the solution. So the problem was back in the day, people didn't know how to option trade, how to get started in the stock market. So Mm. the solution was my book, my course, my chat. Mm. And then with this book, people want to know how to scale their Instagrams. So with this book that I just wrote called Find a Problem, Sell a Solution, I'm talking about how to scale your Instagram. What does scaling your Instagram mean for the people that don't know? Scaling your Instagram is growing organic following. So it's a difference between fake followers and an organic, of course. You know what I'm saying? So I'm teaching people how to create a mass movement for yourself, okay. how psychology of crowd movement. When Once you understand your audience mm-hmm. and how they think, you'll be able to sell to them better. And that's what I taught in the book about crowd psychology and how to sell to your audience. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's okay. Author and uh, yep. author. Right. Um, you have about six. I think mm-hmm. you have six. So YouTube. we got oh, we YouTube. Okay, YouTube. Yep. YouTube, that's, that's, yep. Instagram, okay. stuff like that. And okay. then... uh. Mostly just books, cause I got two books, so mm. I count those as two different, two separate streams of income. Mm. And I got a chat, then I got uh, what's the chat? 
a group a chat. Discord? Or, yeah, a Discord. Discord, chat. okay, yeah. So if we want to just name them off, I just name, you know, the ones that people, the ones that's public, right? Okay. So we have um, chat. Mm-hmm. We have option trading. Option trading. Long term trading. Long term trading. Dividends. Dividends. Two books. Two books. One, two. That's what? Six? <laughs> six. That's seven. All right. That's, that's seven. seven? No, that's yeah. six. Six. YouTube. YouTube. YouTube, seven. Instagram. Instagram, eight. AMU course. AMU course, nine. And then uh, tour. Tour, got that. ten. You sound like you want to keep going. Do we have 11? <laughs> YouTube. Um, and then. Uh, so the course is what? That's the tour. So I I have a separate online course where it's called AM University and we have so I just named ten in, streams of income off the top of my head right mm-hmm. so basically all of those streams of income like the big ones the ones I make a lot of money from came from my strategy called find a problem sell a solution and it's all about plugging and playing where you see a problem so mm-hmm. I I can pretty much make money right now by just traveling somewhere mm-hmm. and figuring out what to like I also like to do this and this is some free game for people. When you travel, you can make a lot of money that way, right? Because what you're mm-hmm. doing is you're pulling a booming industry from here and placing it here. Like I always like to give people like the seafood bag method, right? Mm-hmm. At one point in time, it was only a few people selling that seafood bag, like Juicy, right? Mm-hmm. If they weren't Juicy Crab, they weren't selling. Now you go everywhere, people are selling it. So what, so what I tell people is pulling businesses from – pulling one business and putting it in another place – Mm-hmm. Is how you can make money too, and that's pretty much what I'm in the process of doing, looking at winning uh, systems and seeing where I can place it somewhere else. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so what what would you say is three vices? Like, I, we we talked about you know what I'm saying the ten ways that you get money, but it's like three vices. Like, I don't know if it's a food, a strip clubs, weeds, oh, cars, what are some three jewelry. things that are not really in your financially best interest, productive? But you can't right. Get away from them. Not like financially productive, but you yeah. enjoy them. Um, weed. Weed. Okay. Weed is one of them. Yeah. Um, you I got would some, say you brought some cereal milk, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, some pineapple express from okay. uh, the Backpack Boys in okay. LA. Okay. Okay. I can't wait to try it out. Um. So, uh, I would say I don't really have many vices. Okay. But I would say weed would be. But I, I I look at that as a, a business expense because that's what I say. Are you invested into the cannabis industry? Yes, as well? I am. Okay. Biola. So okay. I actually I am an investor in Biola too. So that's another stream of income. Uh, okay. Al Harrington, shout out to him. Shout out to him. Oh, so, okay, okay. So yep, yeah. I'm, I'm investing in them. Mm. So I'm also doing that too. I'm investing into companies like uh, startup companies and stuff too. So how you have time to do all this shit? <laughs> And you got to make time. What I learned is there's a will, there's a way, man. You got to make time. Even in the Army. Especially for that paper. I had to make time. Like I remember I was a millionaire before I left, so it's a, it was a whole system that I had to go through in order to, you know what I'm saying, get that money while I was in. Because, you know, they take 12 hours of our day. Mm-hmm. We we wake up at 5 a.m. and don't get home to f- for 5 p.m., you feel me? So. Mm-hmm. Damn. So what you do about a female? You single? You married? Oh, you I'm married, married, yeah. How long yeah. you been married? Three years. Three years. So, like, what does your wife do? Manage my company. Mm. You are. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you are. Right, yeah. Hey, hey, nah. Yeah, yeah we can't. Yeah. She, so she manages my company. She the one who created the websites. Mm. She created the course. Uh, like I, I'll give her the vision, and then I'll be like, She'll hey, this. Mm. Exactly. So she's pretty much like, honestly, she's the the backbone of the company. She mm. do all the back end work. I do all the front end work. You feel me? That's how that shit is supposed to be, man. Teamwork. Mm. So I, I love it. I also want to. I also want to teach that as far as young men too is help having your partner become an asset to you. You feel me? Like having your your girl, your wife, or whatnot mm-hmm. create something together. Cause that's how most people. If you look at any system that that's works, how you maintain a relationship. Exactly. Too. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. So, so on some soundtrack shit, bro. If you sitting behind that computer trading all day, because there's a lot of hours behind that computer. What, right. what, what you be vibing to? What you listen to? What's on I don't listen stuff? to uh, music while I'm uh, trading. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I, it's just I silence. Do something similar to this. I'm on. I'm literally live telling people what I'm buying and selling in my okay. chat. Okay. 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 Respect. What about that. What, about what? Who your favorite artist is though? Um, I like a, a lot of Atlanta artists. Uh, I like. Well, for one little baby, is you know what I'm saying, automatic. 
<laughs> Say that shit automatic. Yeah, yeah, any niggas automatic. category. Yeah, any yeah. niggas sound playlist. The top of everybody's playlist is a little Maybe it's for the people. Yeah. Yeah. You damn sure fit the description. <laughs> 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 nah, Lil Baby is one of my uh, favorites out right now. Uh, Big Crit. I like him a lot. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I like Big Crit. Um, I would say Lil Baby killing killing it right now. I like Ride Wave. I like his talent. As far as right now, currently, yeah. I can name those artists if we're talking about all time or currently. Yeah, all time. You the one, whatever you. You don't you listen to like old school R and B. I love old school R and B. I listen to all of it. Um, okay. Mint Condition is one of my favorite uh, groups. Um, Boys to Men by default. Um, Jodeci. Okay. I listen to a lot of that. Give me two I, more. I need five. Okay, Jodeci, Mint Condition. Boys to Men. Drew with Hills, I like them. Um, I like a lot of 90s R&B, uh, Babyface. Mm. Okay. I like him. What would you say to somebody, because we're talking to our audience, that say, man, how can you get some money if you ain't got no money? Like, how can you start Boom. from square one? You dig what I'm saying? Like, so you had a check coming in for the military to invest. Right. But if you at square one, what should you do? I what got you say plenty of approaches to that method. So, square one... You want me to talk about how I did it first? Or? I want you to talk to the water boy that mm. walk up water to you and like, bro, so, I'm trying to be like you, but I ain't got no money. Right. But so I'm trying to get money. So if you don't have money, the first thing I would say is before you can even talk about, we can get into business credit, credit, all of that. Mm -hmm. First thing I'm going to say is saving, of course. Mm -hmm. Creating a system to save. So I talk about the system I used to save to even get money. For one, I was in the Army and I had an extra stream of income. Mm -hmm. What I was also doing was I was putting away money every week. Every Monday, I would put away $100. We're talking, about, we're talking about ground zero because a nigga That's can't save air. I started from zero. From zero, from zero, I put away one hundred dollars. But I mean, I'm talking week. about a nigga that ain't that ain't even got nothing. A way to make lined up. Oh, we talking about a street yeah. nigga, bro. Like, a street nigga that like, ain't uh, in the army. Flat. He ain't got a water boy. A might be first. making. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. That's what we be trying to. That's what okay. we trying to get to. That's what we trying to pull. Yeah, yeah we trying to pull it out here. We trying to pull it out here. He needs one stream of income. You need some type of stream of income. So. One type of stream of income could be anything, whether it's a job, a hustling, whatever mm -hmm. you do to get money, we ain't going to say. Because however somebody gets some money, as long as you ain't killing, you know, stealing, nothing like that, it's fair game in my opinion. Mm. So go go ahead and get your money. Get you some money, one income stream, one, right? Mm. And then the second thing is two streams. You really need two, in my opinion, no matter what it is, you need two streams of income in order to scale At least. quickly, in my mm. opinion. Mm. You yeah. gotta really, you gotta be a hustler from the start. Basically, you gotta have a hustler mentality. I'm about to say like it's it's kind of like everybody not gonna do it if they don't want it. You feel me? But mm. you definitely need income stream one, and then you need to work on income stream two. Mm -hmm. And and with income stream one is gonna be your living expenses. Mm -hmm. Income stream two is your risk taking. Mm -hmm. See mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that way it's risk free. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's so what I did. So if you lose, you you ain't gonna sweat it. Exactly. So okay. that's why I was able to learn investing because mm -hmm. I'm putting in barber money the whole time, just pumping in barber money until I learn it. Right. So right. with me, what I decided to do was teach people a way to not go through what I had to go through that whole selling. So of course you can get credit. You know what I'm saying? You can get business credit or credit. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So let's just say a person gets an LLC, and the best way to get your LLC is to go on zenbusiness.com. It's as simple as literally filling out the application. Like, how long did it take us to get our LLCs? Well, I did mine back at 20, you know, 30 minutes. It if took that. Me. Yeah, if that. Exactly. So people think getting the LLC is so hard. They're going to provide you your EIN and your mm -hmm. LLC, and they even do S corporations. And they even do C corporations. So, and if I was to break down what S corp S corps are for small businesses and C corps are for people who would want to go public if they were to start a business or whatnot. And the mm -hmm. LLC is just you know, a just LLC. the basic yeah, the startup basic. yeah. Right. We we talked about on Big Fast before like balancing balancing your sex. So if somebody got let's say twenty five thirty. Thirty five thousand, whatever the case is. Right. When is the moment when you can go play? Cause some people will go play with all that money, bottles, watches, jewelry, all that type of shit. But when when, when do you mm. feel like is the moment when you can go play? Because I'm gonna keep it one hundred with you, bro. No man should be playing too hard until he got at least, in my opinion, at least an M saved up. Mm. A M because no playing at all till you got I mean, an I M. Didn't, I didn't play at all until I had an mm. M saved up. 
You can mm. look at my Instagram and say I didn't do anything. So you got two, if, let's whatever. If you you gonna have to what, invest when, in yourself. When, but when well, it depends on what career we're talking about. If he's serious, yeah. If he's serious, like if he a rapper, he gotta play a little earlier because he gotta invest right. in himself. He gotta have mm. jewelry. He right. gotta you know what I'm saying this and that. Right. But if you a businessman like me, who wasn't even about all that, I would say I didn't. I'm I'm just telling you my story. Mm. I didn't even believe in playing until I had at least an M in the bank. Mm. I wouldn't buy a watch, not a car, not nothing. Mm. Nothing, you feel me? Mm. Because I wanted to go bigger than than an M. It depends on what your goals are. If your goal is an M, you could play a little earlier. But me, I was kind of like, shoot, this is my first time getting some money. I, when I first had an M, I was only 23. And I was still in the Army. So I'm like, if I blow it all right now, I won't have opportunities in the future. And I kid you not, I bought a house. I, as soon as I came to Atlanta, if you look at it, I had a house as soon as I came here. Mm-hmm. Most people not be aren't able to do that, and on top of that, I stayed in the hotel for three months. I stayed in uh, so I was paying like hundred and fifty dollars a day for three months, just staying in a hotel until I found a house here. Cause I just got the military March 20, 2020 mm-hmm. and I went and then I I didn't purchase my house until June. So from about Damn. so I was staying in the hotel from March to June to June twenty twenty, paying hundred and fifty a day, sometimes two hundred. That's discipline. Discipline. So I knew I couldn't spend my money in the first place because I had a house to buy. Mm-hmm. I had a whole bunch of stuff to buy. So if I would have messed up, I'm thinking about all the things I would have did. If I would have bought a Lamborghini, would have bought a whole bunch of jewelry, mm-hmm. all this stuff. As soon as I got my money, I wouldn't have had no money for a house or to stay in that hotel. For you would have just months. had your Lamborghini and your jewelry. I would have had that. There's a lot of that going on, though. You see what I'm saying? There's a lot of that going on. <laughs> but yeah. I would say, like, you need, I would say 100K cash. You need to start playing with it. But I tell people, what I learned, too, if I had to go back, I wouldn't use my cash. Use your credit. Boom. Mm. See, see, I I did it backwards. I use, I scaled my money, cash, 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 cash. Mm -hmm. But if I, but now that I'm up here and I understand it's best to leverage their money. Where you at, bro? Up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I'm up here. Now that I'm up. <laughs> now that I'm up. You know what I mean? Up here, you feel <laughs> now that I'm oh, up here, shit. I definitely feel like, you know, it's time to get into the business credit and the credit game. And that's what I've been telling people and preaching. Mm-hmm. Hey, while you down, don't do how I did. I saved, saved to get here and use mm-hmm. my money. And mm-hmm. literally everything had to work out in order for me to win, right. you see what I'm saying? Mm. So with credit, when you use somebody else's money, you know what I'm saying, you still got that threshold of what if it don't work out if you're using business credit, you feel me? You can start over. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? But that's, what using, the, that's what the the other kind of people do. Use your cash to pay them back in increments. <laughs> exactly. Use, use your cash to pay them back in increments and sit on your cash and just let your cash pile up mm. and just use business credit, business loans and stuff like that. Mm. And uh, yeah. of course, we talking about doing in the future a business credit session in my live tour, which I'll be doing a, a AMU live tour, which is my company or whatnot. Well, and what does AMU stand for? Aristotle, Mike, and Unraveler. So Aris, uh, Mike is a uh, Caucasian male and a Rabbler is an Indian male, right? Mm-hmm. So the vision was that I was telling them is... So basically y'all are like three the hard way? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So the vision was I was telling them is, for one, we already diversified by default. I wasn't trying to make it that way. I didn't even know these guys' faces at first. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't do business based on race or anything. I do business on... Results. Boom. You see what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. where the money at, right? So... I just so ha- it just so happened that bro was Indian, he was white, right? Mm-hmm. So how I old t- are they? Mike is twenty five, but he's worth a lot, and unra- all of us are rich. But how old are y'all? Um, <laughs> Mike is twenty six. I'm twenty five, and then uh, Unraveler is twenty eight. Pretty much the same age. Mm-hmm. Okay. We from different backgrounds. Uh, I'm the only one without a college degree though in the group. They have college degrees, but it's not in trading. None of us have college degrees in trading mm-hmm. or or the stock market or finance. We That's just crazy. did it and learned it and then taught the world, you know? Mm. Do you rock with, like, some of the other, like, financial literacy crews? I mean, it's like, I guess, like, The Truth, Earn Your Leisure, uh, Him 500 or something. Do you, do you, like, rock with some of them or check their shit out, too? Yes. Okay. All of them. Okay. That's cool. I, I rock with, um, in fact, I just got off the plane. I was talking to 19 Keys, like, yesterday. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. I was talking to 19 Keys. Uh, uh, him 500, I talked to him too. What's next for you? What's next is basically content. Like I'm really trying to become like just just keep scaling my content. And of course I'm gonna keep putting out mm-hmm. streams of income. You know, I, I never like to tell my next move because you know how that go. I be having some, you know. But yeah, yeah, but I privately, you feel me? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like as far as like, I never really speak on what I do next anymore. I just I just say I got these moves coming step. out. Yeah. But yeah. what but what's really next is this AMU tour. Yeah. And that's gonna be in Atlanta where day one we're talking about the fundamentals of option trading and uh technical analysis, right? So the foundation of option trading, technical mm-hmm. and fundamental analysis. So technical analysis is when you're looking at the charts. And then fundamental analysis is pretty much studying the balance sheets and this and that for long term trading, okay. picking out good companies for your long term portfolio. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna teach that day one, long term, and then we hopping right into trading, uh technicals. And then what's te- day two? Day two is where we teach you our personal secret strategies. Cause all of us have what are called high probability setups. Mm-hmm. So so the key to trading is this. You're gonna have a list of eight setups, right? I do personally. Some people have four or five or two. And what we do is we literally sit patiently and we remember these eight setups or you can write them down and put, but you know, I remember them. All I'm doing is waiting on one of those eight things to happen out of the day. And that's when I strike. It's almost like you're a lion in the jungle hunting for prey mm-hmm. and you just in the bushes. And then you waiting on what that prey to set up. So that lion is waiting on that gazelle to drink that water. So you can go attack or something or whatever yeah, it is, yeah. you feel me? That's all I'm doing. It's just I'm a lion in the bushes waiting on something to happen, waiting on something to pop out. And as soon as I see that move happen, I click on it, but I be alerting my group via like this, like a live podcast, like, hey, I'm watching this. All right, when it touch this, I'm going to buy. All right, get your contracts ready. Like stuff like that. Hmm. How do you manage the people that's around you that, well, that came up with you that, that ain't got nothing going on and feel entitled? Hmm. That's a great question. So what I had to learn is you got to be the mean guy to some people. And you got to explain, you got to set the standard. Like, I don't really have anybody, well, I don't. I don't have anybody around me that doesn't have some type of value. Like, everybody offers something. And if you don't, you got to understand that you're not going to be a part of the team. I, I'm unapologetic about that. It's either value-based or you can't get in. You not you can't rock with us. You can't fly with us. You can't do nothing unless you bring value. Cause that's that's life. Quid pro quo is what can you do? That's Latin for mm. you do for yeah. me. I do for you. Mm. You know right. what I'm saying? So I tell people life. I joined the military, so you know what I'm saying. Like I already know, I have tough skin when it comes to you know yelling at me, anything like that. I understand. So I'm the same way with other people. You got to be willing to understand that if you don't have value, mm-hmm. you know it is what it is. You know. You could be jealous, you could be whatever, but you know. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, I feel like you you gonna always have that's that's unavoidable though. Because that's a question you you can ask any rich person. How do you deal with family when they you know what I'm saying, that's unavoidable. I talked to it. I went through it, you went through it, no matter who getting some money, you end up, you know, you getting some money, people gonna feel entitled to what you have. Yeah, every problem become your problem. Every mm-hmm. problem that everybody got becomes your problem. I tell you, that's, that's actually a line I say. Don't make your problems mine. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, right. I, they always, you know, they going to always do that. Hey, bro, you know, I had this situation, this and this and that. Once they figure out you really getting it, you feel yeah, What you would have did if I ain't had that money? Mm-hmm. Do that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank <laughs> said, you. That. That, that, that's pretty much what I'm yeah. trying to say. Right. As far as grown men, though, like, I try to be a little bit more harsh on men in my family, particularly, mm-hmm. because that's how I was able to get out to the world. Because I grew up with three sisters in my household. Mm. So my mom explained to me that, hey, they can have, you know, we're not giving you a thing because you're a man. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, mm. it's either you learn how to take care of yourself, you know what I'm saying, growing up, or you're not going to learn at all. So I get that same approach to other men. If I take care of you, you're not going to learn nothing. All you're going to do is become a bill. And you're going to have to provide for a family one day. So you're not going to understand how to take care of your own family. You see what I'm saying? Really so that's shit. what I'm telling them. I'm like, if right. I if I baby you and, and hey bro, I'm messed up. Can you pay this? I'm like, no. I tell all the men in my family no. Mm-hmm. Because nobody gave me nothing. That's real. You see what I'm saying? But women, I take care of my, you know, my grandma, my my aunt, 
if it's a problem like that, but me and I let them know, like, you got to figure it out. I'm giving you a chance. It's not that I'm saying no because I don't like you mm-hmm. or nothing like that. It's because I don't want to cripple you. I don't want to cripple you because that, that would have crippled me. Getting everything I, I asked for, getting handouts. You know what I mean? Real yeah, shit. Mm-hmm. Well, how you feel about crypto and NFTs and all that shit? Because you ain't mentioned nothing about, like, crypto and Bitcoin and all that I shit. invest in it, but, mm-hmm. you know, like, everyone has their thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if you're a street dude, you sell drugs. If you this, you this, right? Mm-hmm. Stocks are my thing. Gotcha. You feel me? And I and I believe it's easier to make money, and it's and it's a lot you can learn about life in the stock market. Like, I learned how to manage my company from watching big companies manage theirs, like Apple, Google. Like, for instance, mm-hmm. I learned from Apple diversification. If mm-hmm. you notice, I just I just named ten different things I can make money from. Mm-hmm. When you give your audience a broad range of products to buy from, you become almost like a household name and a staple to the to the game or whatever you're doing. So like I tell, a necessity almost. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I had this product, this product, this product, this product. So Apple got AirPods, iPads, all this stuff. And I'm learning from Amazon too. I'm learning from all these different billionaires from watching how they run their, their companies. So the stock market also teaches you how to run your company. Yeah. Because mm. they, if you notice, every, they're always acquiring new companies. They always, what they do is they sit on a lot of cash mm-hmm. and they just sit back and watch other people do the work and they just buy it. Mm. They just buy whatever. They just buy well, them out. Facebook just did. I mean, Facebook on Instagram, Facebook exactly. on everything. Mm. They, exactly. They ain't genius. They just, you popping, nigga, we finna Facebook buy doing the same thing. Like, I learned a lot from Mark. I learned a lot from these billionaire People just watching how they move, how they acquire, how they set up their CEOs, how they set up uh, their successors. Like, all this yeah. stuff people don't think about. Like, you got to have a successor successor in your business. Mm. That makes sense. So that's why I give game. Because if no one if, if, if no one in your camp knows what's going on but you, if something happened to you, they, oh, you see what I'm saying? Count. It all yeah. falls apart. Yeah, you feel for me? Sure. So everybody got to have a successor and all that, too. You know what's going on. So how do you feel about forex trading? Um, I personally, like I said, I stick to the stock market, but I, okay. I I believe it's a, you know, it's a market to make money. Crypto, anything that makes money, I actually am investing in the crypto. Okay. So yeah, I do have crypto, but I don't, you know, advertise that. I do that personally. Like kind of like on some little side shit. Yeah. So that's another stream of income, crypto. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So now we're at twelve. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going crazy. Uh, you want the smart one. How you avoid goddamn the temptation of like other women? Cause you know when black man successful, they they running at you. You know what I'm saying? Right. How you avoid that shit? Believe it or not, I believe other women are intimidated by me. You know what I mean? Like it's because and my wife. Cause you know what I'm saying. Like once they feel like, for instance, they know my wife runs my company. She the one who answered my DMs too, so I ain't even, you know what I'm saying? I don't even. <laughs> yeah, you feel me? Like, so it's like, once that comes, okay, once so they know all that. we're on another level with this shit. Okay. <laughs> ain't nothing oh, yeah, wrong with like, that. I, I don't got time to answer my DMs. Right. I don't got time to, I'm focused on getting this money. Mm. So it's like, I don't really got to avoid it. It don't come near me, for real. I can dig it. You feel me? Oh, you ain't even set yourself up in that, in that lane. It takes a lot to run a company, and it's like, you know. Put it like this, you know, my wife is the one helping me get all this money. So I gotta treat the person. If I if I treat her wrong, the money can fuck up. I'm not saying it's about the money, but you see what I'm saying? It's a lot I have to lose by, you know what I'm saying? Chasing my nut. Exactly. You'll be risking everything. Right. Nah, I dig it. What would you wanna say to the big facts supporters and, and viewers out there? What's the most important thing you would wanna say to them as Aristotle to them? Most important thing I wanna say is Learn financial literacy. Financial literacy is what's going to keep you afloat. It doesn't matter about anything. Financial literacy is this, uh, learning all aspects of the game. Like for me, that's all I'm focused on is learning the taxes, the credit, Mm -hmm. business credit. So remember, you know, credit and business credit, two separate things. Mm -hmm. Um, The stock market, the this and that. The more financial literacy, if if you become financial literate, you will not have no problems. Like yeah. of anything, you just gotta learn some some parts of the game. Mm. You feel me? So that's what I want to tell people: get your foot in the door, learn some things, and yeah, it's possible. Let me straight anything possible with financial literacy. I don't care 
where you from, how broke you are, how down bad you are. Mm. Once you learn financial literacy and learn and you know, money management, money. Yeah. man, what? I could come, I literally can start over plenty of times because I know the system. You see what I'm saying? It's a system yeah. to getting money. Once you learn that system, mm. it's a wrap. And that's what I teach in my book. So I teach in my courses. Well, like I said, I wrote a book called Find a Problem, Sell a Solution. And I believe that's the book that's going to help people learn advertise. I even teach you how to run your Facebook ads, how how I did it. Because literally, like half of my followers came from Facebook ads. Mm. So everywhere I go, somebody knows who, knows who I am. Mm. All Facebook ads. You know what I'm saying? And content, of course. People resharing my content. Oh, I went viral a lot of time. <laughs> oh, you went viral doing what? Just uh, content. Like, uh, I made music. Um, that went viral. So that's another thing. I rap about the stock market, too. Bro, you ain't shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, 13. Yeah, about 25. That's 13. <laughs> about 12 more to go. You rap, too. You yeah. produce. Yeah, so that, that's uh, that's actually what I'm, what I'm getting on, too. So what are you, I'm, like, the Wall Street rapper? I guess you can say that. <laughs> okay, okay. I be going crazy with uh, the rap and that, and it goes viral, so that means I'm okay, somewhat cool. good. You feel yeah. me? Like, yeah, yeah. It went viral the first, the first, uh, Literally, the first one I put out went viral. The first, like, song? First, yeah. like, snippet of me rapping went viral. And you were rapping about, like, the, stock the stocks and stuff. Okay. Yep. So, when you do the, um, when you do the, um, course, mm. you gonna perform? Hey, I could. You see what I'm saying? Like, uh, it's gonna be Hey, yeah, that's a whole other aspect. Then you'll start getting booked for shows. <laughs> no, that's, that's exactly why, because the music, <laughs> no, seriously, like, like, what I'm learning, what I'm learning is, uh, like I told my little brother, I dropped the bar on him uh, today when we was in the vet riding here. I told him, marketing is essential. You can have the best chicken in the world, but if this person markets it better, Facts. this chicken is better. Facts. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Period. It don't, it don't matter Facts. what's going Period. on. Exactly. Yep. That's you what I always say you, about music. A lot of people feel envious towards somebody like, man, I could do that better. I could do that better. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, if he can market it better, people do not. People. Yeah. Mm -hmm. people do not care what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So marketing, your yeah. product is only, in my opinion, your product is only 20%. Of the success. It's all about Fact. creating the illusion. Yeah, Fact. it's only 20%. 80% is going to be the marketing. Whether you a barber, like how I got on with barbering. This is how I was able to scale my barbering in the Army, marketing. Mm -hmm. I went to the local podcast. I, I'm not mm -hmm. the local podcast. The local yard sale uh, pages. Mm -hmm. Told them, hey, I'm cutting hair. Mm. I went to the local, whatever it is. So every, t every city has a yard sale page. So if you cutting grass, if you doing hair, if you doing anything like that, your best bet is to go to Facebook, not Instagram, and, and, and go straight to the yard, go straight to the people in your local area, where it's the yard sale pages, where this and that, and advertise on there. Hmm. And it was plenty, and I won't say it was barbers better than me, because I was better than them, and I was marketing better than them. So you they feel me? did. They did. They did. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. if you got a good product and you can market, you're going to skyrocket quick. You see hmm. what I'm saying? And they can't get no haircut no more for you, because... Actually, I, I cut his hair like a minute ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like literally. Okay, okay. But, but, you but nah, get nah, it. I actually want to get back into that because I, but I want to do it for free. I'm not going to charge a soul again because I'm already up here. I just want to cut hair. <laughs> that up here, up boy. Here. <laughs> that up here. Oh, you yeah. sound like that. You <laughs> have to put that in the Bible. Like, <laughs> nah, like, it's just barbering is something I enjoy doing. It's the, uh, it's therapeutic. Yeah, it's therapeutic to me to, uh, it's like to, you know, art. Yeah, to make I also draw and paint too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, that's something I'm gonna. When do your birthday, too. bro? Yeah, what's your What's your sign? When your birthday? Uh, four twelve ninety six. What's so, that? So, what are you in Aries? Yeah, Aries. Okay. okay. So I draw and paint too. That was actually one of my first passions. So that's why barbering was so easy to me because I used to have to have a steel hand in mm -hmm. order to, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's easier to fade and shade and do all that. You feel me? Some people just born. Destined to be what they gonna be. Bro. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, it was kind of born up there. Like. <laughs> born up nah, there. I used, to, I used <laughs> to believe that though. I used to believe people are born for until I realized nothing would happen if I didn't do it consistently. Well, no, for sure. Yeah, you, know you got to put action sure. in it. For Everybody sure. born for it, but some yeah. people just born with the mindset of discipline. Because all you seen here saying all the shit you've been seeing saying it take extreme discipline. Yeah. Dream. Not to be yeah, got damn, to mm -hmm. not goddamn fall victim to the street shit. To not fall victim to these women. Mm -hmm. To not fall victim to goddamn splurging and mm -hmm. balling when you got the money. Mm -hmm. That shit take real discipline, dog. Well, right. it's about who you want to attract too, because mm -hmm. I didn't want to the reason why I didn't fall into the streets because my goal wasn't to impress 
uh, when I was 12, my goal wasn't to impress 18-year-old Pookie. I didn't want to impress him. I wanted to impress the young ladies. So I didn't do street stuff because I didn't care about impressing them. So I believe it's all about what you care about impressing, whether it's yourself. It's about the crowd you're trying to, you know what I'm saying, impress. So I feel like a lot of guys fall victim to the streets, too, is because they just trying to fit in. They just trying to, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And my goal in life was never to fit in. I already knew I was different. I already knew a lot of stuff I wouldn't be understood in the first place. So I never really just went that route. Mm -hmm. mm. Game from Aristotle, you know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all tap in. Give oh, everybody yeah. them Make websites, them Instagrams, them Facebooks, them Twitters. Oh, Let them know about the hard, tour. Man. Give everybody, you know what I'm saying, so they can tap oh, yeah. in with you. So my Instagram is Aristotle underscore investments. Uh, my YouTube is Aristotle Investments. And make sure you guys, once again, tune in in Atlanta. I'm going to be teaching you guys live. It costs 1500 for three days. We're going to offer food, and we got drinks. It's a lot. So is it in person? In person. I'll ask you a key question because this is just – This is in Can person. they smoke there? No. They cannot smoke. Okay. How many people? And what kind of food? Is it like a up? snack lunch? Uh, or max, like 250 or is catered, it like real food? Meal. Catered meals. Like okay. we not. What day is it? What day is it? September 11th through the 13th. Mm. Oh, you dropping bombs. September 11th. September 11th through the 13th. <laughs> we gonna be, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Oh, I, got, not with the USA shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> not with the USA. No, we can edit this shit out. No, 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 because guess what? They didn't drop bombs. They flew a plane. So he, you know what I'm saying? We drop bombs yeah, on yeah, them in response. Hey, nah, that's what I'm saying. We gonna keep that. Keep it? We gonna keep it. We'll keep it. We're gonna keep it wrong. We'll we keep didn't drop, it. We yeah, didn't drop it. bomb. They flew a plane. Fight we yeah. drop bomb. You see what I'm oh, saying? Nah, they dropped. They killed the whole country. Huh? Uh -huh. Aristotle underscore investment. Aristotle yeah. underscore investments. We appreciate it, man. You're welcome on Bennett Big right, Facts. Very in the future, you know what I'm saying? Make what you call your informative. informative. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Information -ative. I'm gonna be on your line, bro. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Got to. Yeah. Most definitely. Big shout out to Aristotle, Aristotle Investments. You ain't even shout, shout out the crew real quick before you oh, slide. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is my boy, Jeff. He own Grips, Goodies, and Treats. Okay. You ain't you know bring no treats? So you, nah, that shit good as hell, too. I know you. If you in that. <laughs> Jay don't always do that. I know him. Yeah. That's, that's him. Like, oh, oh, that's him. That's Grips, Goodies, and Treats. So cool. that's my, this is my cousin, my blood cousin. Okay. Yeah. Running the family. This is my blood little brother. Okay. So he the one who edited all my videos and filmed my content for me and all that. Mm -hmm. So and then that's core. He uh, manages uh, mm -hmm. the tours. Mm -hmm. the, Core um, salute. Just, you know what I'm saying? Like he he's somebody I talk to every day about business moves and this and that. So all three of them are the guys I talk to about you know my moves or whatnot. So they'll know before anybody. Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm saying? If you want to just know my moves, you got to kidnap one of them. <laughs> Figure it out. You feel? <laughs> 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 That's what it is. Big shouts out to Aristotle pulling up the Big Facts. www.bigfactspod.com. Salute. Salute. All that, man. Salute.